What's up everybody? We're back in the shop today. I know you've been waiting for this video for a while, so here it is. Today, we're gonna build some micro traps for the NFED half-wave antenna. Stay tuned. So before we get started, let's talk about what we're gonna need for this project. First things first, we need inductors and capacitors to make a resonant LC circuit that'll function as a trap. These red dash two mix iron powder toroids. There's a 37 size, a 44 size, and a 50 size. Take your pick. I found that the 37 size toroids work fine with QRP at five watts or less. For a little more power, a little more efficiency, you may want to step up the size a little bit. It'll slightly increase the size and bulk of your trap, but really not by much. For wire, you're gonna need some magnet wire here. 24 to 28 gauge is pretty ideal for these traps. You may find for the smaller toroids and uh, the higher inductance values, you may need to step down to that 28 gauge size wire. I recommend having both on hand. They just come in handy. For your trap, you're also gonna need a surface mount capacitor. These are 100 volt surface mount ceramic capacitors in 39 picofarads. It's really nice to have a range of capacitors to select from in the 30 to maybe 80 to 90 uh, picofarad rated range. That'll really give you the range of capacitance values to, to build your traps just right for how you want it to work in your antenna. You're also gonna need some of this perforated PC board material that you're going to build your traps on. That acts as a holder for the capacitor and strain relief for the wires attaching to it. And then finally, I always like to pot these with five minute epoxy to hold all the wires in place and make sure the tuning doesn't get messed with uh, as you proceed. The only other thing you need that I'm not showing here is uh, your heat shrink tubing to protect the trap when you're done. I've included some shopping list links in the description below to make it easier for you to get what you need for this project. So let's start out with a little discussion on what a trap actually is. An antenna trap is nothing more than a parallel LC circuit, inductor and capacitor in parallel, that resonate on a specific frequency and provide a high impedance on that frequency or very close to it. The the result is, is sort of a roadblock for RF at that point on the wire on that very specific frequency. On other frequencies, those traps just work as inductors and, and provide some inductive loading to the antenna. So how do we figure out what components we're going to use in our antenna? Well, we want to start out first with determining what our resonant frequency is going to be. So let's assume we're building a trap for 20 meters, 14 megahertz. So we'll enter 14 there, and we know uh, from experience, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, that we want our trap inductance to end up around, uh, oh, in the 2 to maybe 4 or 5 microhenry range. So let's say 2 to 5 microhenries. Reasoning behind that is just, the space we have on our toroids to build these inductors. The more inductance you have, the more turns you need on your toroid. And with these tiny little T37-2 toroids, you really just can't fit more than, say, 35 or 40 turns of wire on them, even with that 28-gauge wire. Yeah, you can go down in size and wire, but you lose some efficiency there. So I typically prefer to stick with that 28-gauge. So let's take a, a shot at the kind of the mid-range here. We'll pick an inductance of three microhenries. So if we pick three microhenries, we know we're going to need a capacitance of about 43 picofarads. Uh, I don't have a 43 picofarad capacitor, but I do have a 39 picofarad capacitor. So let's enter 39 picofarads there. 14 megahertz again in our resonant frequency. And we can see that we need an inductance of 3.314 microhenries. So how do we get that? Well, we jump over here to our other toroid winding calculator, and we're going to select iron powder, because that's uh, the nature of the mix of these toroids. We're going to enter our inductance of 3.314. We know our core. Uh, we're going to go with the smallest ones we have, the T37 cores. And we know the material is the red-2 mix. I'm going to hit calculate, 
scroll down to the result. So it tells us here that to get, uh, well, close to 3.314, 3.4 actual uh, microhenries, and this is going to vary a little bit, we need 29 turns on that little toroid. So we're probably going to want to go with the smaller 28 gauge wire to achieve that. So that's what we're going to use for our uh, first 20 meter trap. Now let's take a look at what this would require if we wanted to build a trap for uh, the 30 meter band. So 10 megahertz is what we're going to select here. Well, 10.1. So we need an inductance for this uh, with that same 39 picofarad capacitor of 6.367 microhenries. So let's see how many turns that requires. 6.367. Calculate. So we're going to need 40 turns for that that's going to be a little harder to squeeze onto those little toroids. And uh, let's assume we have some trouble achieving that. What can we do? Well, one of the things we can do is increase our capacitance value. I've also got some 56 picofarad capacitors on hand here. And conveniently, that brings the inductance down to 4.434 microhenries. So how many turns are required for 4.434? we need 33 turns. So 33 is probably going to be a more achievable quantity of turns on those little T37-2 toroids. So for our 30 meter trap, we'll go ahead and go with that value. Let's start building. So we're gonna cut down our PCB material here into small strips, one hole wide by six holes long. I'm using a Dremel tool for this. It makes it pretty easy. And the, the bit that I'm using is just a, a diamond cutting wheel. You don't have to use a diamond wheel for this. I like using it because it has a nice narrow kerf, narrow cut path uh, that doesn't waste a whole lot of board and it makes it pretty darn easy to cut. So, so I'm gonna cut all the way down this first strip here and just make a, a one hole wide strip down the end of the board. So now that we've got our strip here, I'm going to cut it into segments that are six holes long. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to cut across the seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cut across the seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that one's going to be just a little too long, so we'll cut off the end. Let's chop this up. There's one. There's two. I'll trim this guy. And there we go. So the last thing I want to do with these is swap my bit out for the drum sander because I want to shape these a little bit. I want to round the ends. I want to taper the back so it fits inside the toroid. And, and then the last thing I'm going to do is drill these holes slightly larger. So there's one. So the last thing I want to do here is drill 
each of the two holes on the ends of these, uh, two holes on each end, slightly larger for uh, the 26 gauge poly stealth wire I'm gonna use with this. It's just a little bit bigger than the, the standard holes. Same here. And that should do. All right, we got the soldering iron heated up here and we're ready to put this thing together. So I'm gonna pull one of these 39 picofarad capacitors out of this strip here. There we go. That piece is going to go at the center of the PCB here. I like to put it off to the side slightly. And what I'm actually gonna do is uh, tin these contacts here. Clean off the iron tip. Right on the edges. My goal is to not plug these holes because I wanna use those later. You'll see why. And take my capacitor, tack it into place on the end, spin that around, hold that down, tack the other end. So that should do. So you can see I've left space for wires to come through each of those holes on either end of the capacitor. And that's, uh, that's really kind of a key element to make this a lot easier. So for the next part of the test, I'm going to temporarily tack these lead wires off of the toroid onto either end of the capacitor. So the toroid's going to be in parallel with the capacitor. A little bit of a battle here need four hands there we go so it's not pretty it's not going to be strong but it's good enough for the test so for tuning we're going to use a rig expert aa35 zoom bnc to binding post connector and a short piece of wire. This piece of wire can be, I don't know, three to five inches long is probably a good length. And you're gonna feed that wire through the center of the toroid, just like that. Turn on our analyzer. And run an SWR plot. So we can immediately see that our resonance is at 13.7 megahertz, which is a bit low. Um, we're probably going to need to remove a turn from this toroid, so let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Tack that back on temporarily. Let's try that one more time. So we ideally want that resonance to be right at the bottom of the band. That's gonna give us the best uh, functionality in this trap. It'll block the RF at that point and It'll, by having it just off of the resonant point where we're operating, we'll have slightly smaller losses. So we don't want to re-add a turn, but we can bring that resonance down by simply compressing these coils, bringing these turns on the toroid closer together. You'll find that's a pretty easy way to do fine tuning of your traps. So I did a little bit of uh, compressing of coils there. Let's see what we have now. 
and that's perfect. 14, right at the base of the band, 14.003 megahertz. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, do some fine tuning here after I uh, trim these leads and, and uh, solder the wires on to the, the PCB. So let's go ahead and do that. Remove these temporary attachments. So I want these leads pointing in toward the center of the toroid, but I want to try to avoid removing or adding turns as I sort this out. So trim that one, trim that one. Now I got to strip the enamel off of these. All right. So I've got my leads stripped. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. Got my leads stripped here. My place. PCB and capacitor in the middle of the toroid core. I'm gonna feed these leads through those holes that we previously made sure we didn't plug up with solder. So it's nice to keep those wires long enough to extend out toward the holes on the ends. Those will be uh, our electrical contact points that we can keep clean and uh, accessible to solder the antenna wire on once we get to that point. through. There we go. So that's generally our trap. We got to do a little bit of soldering here to tack those wires on at the ends of the capacitor. go. Get the other side. All right, I think we've got it there. Let's do a closer inspection. Looks pretty good. So does that side. So let's, uh, now that we've got this soldered, get some of this wire out of here. Let's put it back on the analyzer. Let's see what we've got. So again, just feeding the wire through the toroid. There you go, and we'll run that again. So our resonance is a little bit low. We can bring that up by spreading out the turns on the toroid. All right, so we've got our resonance just about right on this. I've spread the coils as much as I can, and it's still just a little bit lower than I would actually prefer, but uh, it'll do. This, this will certainly work. Um, it'll provide enough impedance on the lower end of the 20 meter band to act as a roadblock for frequencies there. So let's pull this off of the wire here, and what I'm gonna do next is mix a little bit of epoxy and just put a little bit of epoxy in the center of the toroid. Help glue those turns into place 
so they can't move and adjust that tuning. So we want to be careful when we apply the epoxy here. We want to make sure we don't uh, cover up all of the conductive wires that we need to be able to solder to. And we want to make sure we don't fill in the holes that the antenna wires need to go through. So, put it carefully. go. So you can see the end of the wire right there, the end of the magnet wire is still exposed and can easily be soldered to this pad right here. Now the alternative to building it this way and potting it at this point with the epoxy is to simply put that epoxy on later after you've soldered the antenna wires to this. I like to do it at this point just to help make sure the tuning doesn't change uh, later in the process and to keep those solder pads exposed as much as possible, just in case you decide to reuse this trap on a different antenna at a later point. So we'll let that cure, and then we'll get back to the next step. So I'm going to assume you already built your end-fed half-wave matching unit from the previous video, and I'm also going to assume that you've attached a 20 meter half wavelength element to that and fine tuned it for resonance on 20 meters. Your next step is going to be to take the end of that 20 meter element and to attach it to this trap. So you'll feed down through one hole, up through the other hole, Just like that, with the wire coming out on the solderable side of the board here. So I'm going to strip the tip of that wire. So after I've tinned the tip of the wire here, I'm going to fold it back to where it's in position to solder. onto that side of the trap. There we go. So we've soldered the end of the 20 meter element onto the trap. got our strain relief built in. Now one last thing you can do on this, I forgot to do on this one, uh, it's kind of nice to put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on the end here to, to protect that wire and provide a little bit of additional strain relief. So once you've got this soldered onto your 20 meter element, you're going to add wire off of the other end of the trap and run that out and tune it for your next band up. Whether it's 30 meters or 40 meters, uh, your, your pick there uh, for your next band. But that's, uh, that's your next step. Finally, to finish off this trap, take a piece of heat shrink tubing that's big enough to fit around the outside of the toroid. Cut a narrow strip, maybe um, an eighth to a quarter inch wide, and heat shrink that into place to protect it. In the end, it'll look something like this one here. That's a slightly larger toroid, but, uh, but you get the idea with the heat shrink protection on there. So let's talk a little bit about the final assembly with this. We're going to assume you already built your end-fed half-wave matching unit and optimized it for 30 meters. We're also going to assume that you built a 20 meter and a 30 meter trap to use with your antenna. So we're going to take our end-fed half-wave matching unit, attach it to our antenna analyzer, and we're going to add a bit more than a half-wavelength on 20 meters of wire. We're going to fine tune that, trim it as necessary, back to where we find that perfect resonant point. At that point, we attach our 20 meter trap. On the other side of that trap, we're going to attach another, oh, about 5 meters of wire. 
and then we'll measure and tune that to resonance on 30 meters. When we find that perfect resonant point, once again, we'll attach our 30 meter trap and attach some more wire to the end of that. Again, another roughly five meters or so. Uh, it's always best to cut it a little bit long and, and trim. Run that wire out, test it with your analyzer, and trim until you find that perfect resonance on 40. So long as you built this 20 meter trap well and tuned it for the right part of the 20 meter band, it's gonna act like a roadblock and this antenna when it's functioning on 20 meters won't be able to detect anything beyond that first trap. It'll just look like a 20 meter end fed half wave. On 30 meters, this 20 meter trap will act like a, a small loading coil and it'll electrically shorten the antenna just slightly. Um, and when that 30 meter RF hits this 30 meter trap, it'll just stop there and it won't see any of that wire beyond that. On 40 meters, both that 20 meter trap and the 30 meter trap will in act as a little bit of inductive loading. So your total antenna length is probably going to only be about 60 to 62 feet rather than about 66 to 67 feet. So you do get a little bit of uh, a shorter antenna out of this. Uh, the drawback of course to that is that you get a slightly narrower bandwidth on 40 meters. So there you have it. Now you guys can build traps for your mini end fed half wave antennas. If you figure out any new tricks that make this project easier or better, let me know in the comments below. I love to hear feedback on how these projects can be done better and I'm sure everybody else does too. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys got a lot out of this and I hope you build traps for your mini and fed half waves. Till next time, 7-3 from Adam at K6ARK Portable Radio.